A lot of entrepreneurs in this country happen to be immigrants is because they have an appetite for risk, right? When you leave your country, you leave your familiar surroundings, you leave your family, and you come here, uh, that's about as risky a thing as you can do. You kind of get onto a plane. I came, got onto a plane and came to this country with $300 in my pocket and knowing that it's gonna cost me $4 a minute to call back home. When you take that risk, you realize that you're doing that because there is you know, potential to do something big. When we look at an investment, you know, great team, big problem, great execution plan, but if they're gonna require $500 million to get there, it's probably not an investment we can make. And the last thing that's somewhere in there that VCs think about but they don't talk about a lot is exits, right? Now, why is there that, you know, VCs don't make too many investments in the music industry? Well, partly because there hasn't been too many successful exits in the music industry. You build a successful services company, you don't get paid very much. Right? If you build a consulting company that does 100 million in revenue, you might get paid 120 million dollars for that. Right? So you think a little bit about are you building a company in a space where if you build it and you solve the problem and you do it with not too much capital, will you still get paid for it? We tend to put the team first. There are others who will tell you that the problem comes first. You know, if you have a technical problem, technical innovation, you can always find the right team to build a company around it. And there are other people who say, you know what, we're not gonna focus on anything that's gonna require more than $20 million of capital. In terms of the startups that come to us to pitch, right? If they are very, if they're very early stage companies, I think where they really lack is this. Especially if these are startups that are built on top of scientific innovation, technological invention of sorts. People don't realize that um, team really matters. Not only because this is going to be your partner and thinker and when things are in the shitters, these are the guy who's going to be your you know, sort of moral support. But more importantly, what kind of resourcefulness do you bring to the table? Do they really understand how to reach out to the customers? How to price this product? Who needs to be at the table for this to become successful if it's a multivariate problem? I have a CEO, I have a CFO, I have a COO. That's really not the key. The most important thing is, you know, to have this execution plan acted upon, what do you need? The founder's vision, and it's usually somebody who can make the stuff, right? And then you have commercial genius, and who's somebody who said, sell the stuff, right? At the simplistic level, you need to have that understanding, right? Who is the guy who's gonna make the stuff? Who's the guy who's gonna sell the stuff? And why is this guy the best guy to make the stuff? And why is this guy the best guy to sell the stuff? I built a company myself, frankly, you know, it wasn't a Facebook or a Google, but you know, I figured out that, you know, yeah, I had the vision, but I needed to find somebody who could make the stuff even better than I could. I have a very interesting, very clever idea. We went out and hired people, you know, part of my team very early on, who were better than me at making this stuff. And guess what? The next person we hire was, you know, we need somebody who knows this industry well to sell this stuff. Yes, we were founders, and yes, we could give ourselves whatever in the heck titles we wanted, but that wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing is to get execution done, we needed to build a team that was stronger. After that, we went to the venture capitalists and we raised capital. So if you figured something out like Bilal has, and if you're